Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Rob here from Southwest Florida Television. Another beautiful morning here in Southwest Florida. Flat, flat water again out there in the Gulf. Not too bad this morning. The rangers said the red tide is starting to move offshore. Still bad up at the north end of the park, but not near as bad down at the south end. That's been the pattern. It seems that the further north you go, the worse the red tide gets. This is area one. I'm out here, I get out a few minutes later than the past couple days here. Hopefully we'll get lucky and catch a couple dolphins out here. Three days in a row we had dolphin sightings in the morning. Three days in a row. Will there be a fourth morning? The tide's just about out here. We're almost at low tide. Looks like the rangers and the volunteers did a good job of cleaning up the beach. I don't see a lot of dead critters on it. I'm sure there'll be some washing up, crawling up. The crabs, those crabs that are dying, that is so sad. There's one here. These crabs are eating those fish that died. They got poisoned with the red tide, and the crabs are dying. So the crabs, I think, are going to be a problem here for a while. So sad seeing anything dead on the beach, even if it's a crab. Here's another one of those crabs. I don't know what the heck these are. Is this one alive? This one's kind of barely alive here. I don't know what these guys are. Does anybody know what kind of crab that is? Is that just a different type of calico crab? Who knows what kind of crab that is? Such a beautiful, beautiful animal. You can see it's two eyes there, looking at the camera. Sadly, it's dying. All different types of crabs have been washing up on the beach or crawling up on the beach and dying. Weather-wise, it's really nice out here right now. It's absolutely gorgeous. The water is definitely clearing up here. By no means is it crystal clear or perfect, but it is starting to clear up. 
down at the south end of the park here. That bird's actually taking a bath here. <laughs> Let's walk up the beach, see what we find. Maybe we'll see our dolphins. Maybe we'll find some neat shells out here this morning as the tide goes out. And a couple nice shells yesterday. Some whelks, lightning whelks. There's that one crab again. I have no idea what kind of crab that is. If anybody knows, go ahead and add a comment there. Beautiful little crab, sad to see it dying. We saw one of those yesterday on the beach as well, up a little further up the beach. But the red tide is definitely taking its toll on the bottom feeders now. Very sad. Unfortunately, that was expected. It just makes sense, the fish the dead fish slowly settle on the bottom, then the crabs move in and eat them. And of course, they're gonna get those toxins. They're gonna ingest those same toxins and die. My friend, TJ, TJ Thompson, he, Made some good comments yesterday. He tried to interject there with some great comments in our posts yesterday, in our in my live feed yesterday, and a couple of my other videos. Somebody asked about if we find dead birds out here. Well, they have found dead birds. Yes, there have been dead birds. It takes a while for the red tide to affect the birds. Of course, it gets in. They eat the fish that are poisoned and that gets in their system, but it takes a while longer to affect the birds for some reason. PJ actually made a comment about that. He works, he's a volunteer at the Conservancy. He's seen firsthand the devastation caused by not only the red tide, but that toxic blue-green blue -green algae. He's seen some terrible sights, dead dolphins, sea turtles nobody out here this morning awful quiet the red tide warning is low Again, the ranger at the front gate said that it seems to be clearing, getting much better at the south end of the park. The further north you get, the worse it gets. And as I said earlier, that seems to have been 
the case all along here. The further north you go, the worse the red tide gets. Oh, there's a dead puffer fish upside down on its back. Poor little puffer fish. Such neat, neat little, neat little critters. It's horrible to see them dead like this. You know, if you do come out to the beach here to check things out, you definitely want to make sure you wash off thoroughly, especially if you go in the water. I'll go out in the water, maybe up to my knees. I don't have any cuts or anything. If you have any cuts or abrasions, don't go in the water. Stay out of the water with any open wounds. And if you do go in, I would not suggest you go in above your knees. Just seeing lots of crabs. Little baby crabs, all size crabs. That's a little baby right there. Not really seeing any action out here in the water. It's still kind of dark. The water is still cloudy and got that brownish color. However, it's looking a bit better. But it's funny, just a few hundred yards to the south of me, it was a lot, a lot different looking, a lot more, a lot clearer than it is up here. Amazing. Just a few hundred yards makes a difference like that. It's just all about the currents. Excuse me. Now, I shared some photos last night that somebody took at Loudermilk Beach during sunset. I didn't check that post this morning. I know people were curious. They were asking if there was red tide down there. I have no idea. I didn't take those pictures, but I was hoping the person that took the pictures would have maybe commented about the conditions down there to the south. Well, as I walk along here, for the most part, it looks like they've gotten the eels, the dead eels, picked up off the beach. Now it looks like we're just dealing with the crabs. Again, another extremely, extremely calm morning out there. I haven't seen any dolphins yet. I might have missed them. I got out here a little later than normal. I might have missed them. Or they might have moved on. I was really surprised to see so many dolphins out here in the past few days during the red tide. A month ago, this beach was just absolutely deserted. There was nobody, no people, no birds, no fish. 
It was absolutely deserted out here. Something was just jumping around out there with some fish. Looks like a little school of fish swirling around. really different out here with no people. I just see one of our park rangers up ahead of me walking the beach. bird's been following me all the way up the beach. He's been just staying ahead of me. Oh, he's gonna go finally go around me. So far, no signs of any major fish kills or anything here this morning. So I do believe the red tide is backing off. But we just never know. Definitely at low tide here. You can see all these tree stumps up in area three sticking up out, out of the sand. These are usually in the water. But years, many, 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 many years ago, you can see how far out the trees used to be. Many, many years ago. This beach is Kind of unique it's an actually it's actually a barrier island something just jumped right there nice to know something's alive out there in the water this is a natural barrier island here so that's one of the main reasons that they don't mess around with too much dredging and beach renourishment here they let the tide take its course the currents the tides and this beach is constantly changing shape. This is all new, all these curves up along the beach, all new. It's changing shape, it's changing size. Sometimes it's much further out. Sometimes we hardly have any beach. Right now, we're probably on the low side here. We don't have a lot of beach. We've had a lot of erosion over the past year or so. Sometimes we'll get a big storm offshore, a big offshore storm, and it dumps sand up on the beach. It comes and goes. Very strange. It's actually kind of interesting, very unique. Anybody just joining, we're up in North Naples, Florida, at Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park. Just checking things out. We're still under a red tide warning. I haven't seen any dolphins swim by yet this morning. No dolphins. I might have got out here a little late, too late for them this morning, but you never know when they might appear, where and when. Usually, here in the mornings, we'll catch them coming from the north end of the park, heading south. And sometimes we'll catch them returning too during our beach walks. 
<clears throat> yesterday we saw, excuse me, yesterday we saw three little groups of dolphins. Well, Saturday or Sunday, we saw, I don't know how many dolphins. I couldn't, I couldn't count them all. We saw so many dolphins Sunday morning. It was a dolphin morning, Sunday morning. That's all my beach walk was about. Following the dolphins up and down the beach. That was awesome Sunday. Saturday. Saturday's beach walk was one of the most bizarre beach walks I've ever had. This beach was just crawling right out here in the water, just crawling with eels, eels and crabs all along the shoreline here. It was just incredible, absolutely incredible. Saturday's beach walk. You need to go check that out. Sadly, down here is a dead stone crab. That thing hanging off the back, that's where it had, it was full of eggs. It was a female carrying her eggs. So sad to see a dead stone crab on the beach. We've seen several of those out here. All different types of crabs. seen any eels on the beach. I think the rangers picked them all up. We did have lots of dead eels on the beach the other day. Here's a dead catfish. Another bottom feeder. That's what we're going to be having problems with, all the fish that are eating the other dead fish. All the bottom feeders, the crabs. There's even been shrimp, dead shrimp now on the beach. Just washing up. That's something else we saw on Saturday, dead shrimp all over. All dead crabs down here. <clears throat> now the water is definitely, definitely changing color as I get further north here. Look at that sky though. Wow. Beautiful out here this morning. Beautiful weather. Just too bad it's all spoiled by this red tide. When you read articles about red tide, you can see it was first documented, the first documented case was back in the 1700s. And I wonder what that red tide was like versus the red tide we have now. I'm sure this red algae has evolved Everything evolves. I mean, the old saying, you are what you eat. Well, it probably applies to this red algae out here as well. I mean, it's, its diet has changed since we've 
developed the coastlines and started dumping all of our pollutants into the water. So has that red algae actually gotten worse? Has it gotten stronger, more toxic? Probably. That's just my assumption. But I'm sure it's not the same as the red tide in the 1700s. There's an osprey calling out. Did you hear that bird chirping? That is an osprey. And it is perched all the way up on the top of this pine tree up here. And there's another one flying in. Oh, now they're both taken off. One just came in and landed and the other one took off. Darn it. Is it gonna come back? Are we gonna have two ospreys up here? Yep. There it goes. There they go. Absolutely, definitely a male and a female. One's much larger than the other. They're just flying around. So they're probably pairing up. I don't know where they went. They flew off into the, back into the trees there. Well, that was neat. Kind of got the, a little glimpse of them there. I see them, they're coming out down there now. Can't see them in the camera, but okay. It looks like the male. Coming back towards, ugh, now he perched up in this tree back here. Let's see if we can get a look at him sitting up there. The ospreys are so neat, beautiful birds. Hopefully he'll sit there long enough for me to get a shot of him. I can't even see him now. He blends in so well with the trees. Where did you go, Mr. Osprey? He's keeping an eye on me. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get close to him or not. He's definitely looking at me. right up on the top there. It's about as close as I can get from here. I don't want to spook him. He's out there just looking in the water waiting for a fish to come by. Beautiful birds. Let me see if I can zoom in any more. That's about it with the iPhone. Really hard holding it steady here. A beautiful osprey. I can't hold it steady anymore. But if you look very, very closely, he's right up just above my finger right there. That's where we were looking. That little speck right up there. Neat. And it was neat to see two of them just a little bit earlier. Definitely looked like a male and a female. This was the male here. It was almost twice the size of the other one. It looks like we got some volunteers up here working on the beach. 
checking things out. Maybe one of our rangers. Still up. Oh no, it's a duck. <laughs> An anhinga maybe. I saw a little head sticking out of the water out there. Where was it? Where the heck did it go? It was next to that pole there. Oh no, I'm at the wrong buoy. Sorry. Where it is there? I saw that coming up and down in and out of the water. For a second, I just thought there was a dolphin popping up. I think it's an anhinga. I can't tell from here. They swim underwater chasing fish. Where's it gonna pop up? They actually go down, swim underwater, chase a fish around. All right, where did it go? It can stay under for a while, apparently. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. It just popped up over here on the left. Oh, it just went down again. <laughs> All right, you little booger. Where are you at? That is amazing. Where'd it go? Still underwater. Up oh, there it is. Up, <laughs> oh, back up. Oh, there it is. Pretty sure that's an anhinga. Very, very neat. It's back underwater. Come on, dolphins. Just one dolphin. I'll be happy with one dolphin today. I think my day is always better if we have a dolphin sighting in the morning. There's a, here's a little worm tip. The tip of a worm shell. That's a really pointy one there. We'll go up a little further to the north. Maybe we'll find some nice shells out here this morning. One never knows. Sadly, still seeing dead fish. There's a two dead toadfish on the beach. Toadfish, wild looking fish. Still dealing with that red tide if you're just tuning in here. Be sure to introduce yourself to the group here. Let people know where you're watching from. We're like one big happy beach family here. Most of us are happy. Every once in a while we get somebody that's not happy. There's a dead catfish. Yeah, how can you not be happy when you see a dolphin? I mean, it's such a great distraction. It takes away from all this nastiness of the red tide. Wow, right up here, the beach is really changing shape again. It is just so amazing how this beach changes just constantly. It's constantly changing. See this little cut? We just lost our connection. This little cut here, that's new. All new. I was saying earlier how this beach is constantly changing, and this is an example of it. Now there was, um, I read an article somewhere, darn it, and I forgot the name of it. But they said 
that scientists have found another strain of algae out here in the Gulf. It also kills fish. It's not toxic to humans. And it's kind of like a red seaweed. I don't think this is it. But if it is, it makes total sense why you know, the fish are dying on top of the red tide. More fish are dying. I don't know what that looks like for sure. That's what we need, more problems. By the way, the tide is on its still on its way out here. It'll be low tide shortly. I'm hoping to find a few nice shells. Still keeping my fingers crossed that a pod of dolphins will swim by. But we just never know. We can't predict where and when those dolphins are gonna come by. There's a little Florida, Florida fighting conch shell down here. Very, very common shell here on the beaches of Southwest Florida, the Florida fighting conch. Sun's just finally starting to pop up over the trees. This past weekend, Saturday and Sunday, two, two very, very interesting beach walks. You need to check them out. You need to watch those videos. Good morning. Watch them on YouTube. It's a little better quality. You'll find the links in the description of the post for those two beach walks, Saturday and Sunday. Past this past Saturday and Sunday morning. Two very distinct beach walks. We're totally different from each other. Saturday, just thousands and thousands of eels swimming along the beach here. Thousands of them. Thousands and thousands of crabs. It looked like a carpet out here in the water. Sunday, they were just about all gone. The eels were gone. Still some crabs left. But Sunday, I just spent the entire morning following dolphins up and down the beach, running up and down the beach, staying with them the best I could. Pod after pod of dolphins swimming by on Sunday. We saw dolphins Friday, or I'm sorry, we saw dolphins Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. No dolphins this morning. What's up with that? Did they come out earlier this morning? Possibly. Did they move a little further south or a little further north? Possibly. The one thing that's pretty much guaranteed if you come out here to Del Norwegens. Obviously, you might want to wait till the red tide's gone, but you're pretty much always going to see dolphins at some point swim by if you spend the day out here or any of our beaches here in Naples, Vanderbilt, Clam Pass. Got some beautiful beaches down by the Naples Pier. There's usually some dolphins hanging out around the pier. Some regulars. Well, 
I'm keeping my eyes open here for some interesting shells. Usually when the tide goes out is when the shelling is the best. So far, I'm really not seeing anything out of the ordinary here that, you know, like something that's collectible. Here's something cool. Here's a cone shell, an alphabet cone. It's kind of worn out. That's a nice little shell, an old alphabet cone. It's neat. An alphabet cone. I'll keep that. It's not a perfect specimen, but it's still nice. Still lets people see what an alphabet cone looks like. What else do we have here? Well, of course, we can always find these. I showed you one earlier. We can always find the fighting conch shells, the Florida fighting conchs. I always want to make sure the shells are empty before we take them home. Don't take anything home that has a living animal inside. A lot of little critters call these empty shells home, not just the original occupants. Sadly, I haven't seen any live Florida fighting conchs in a while. Probably because of the red tide. And the red tide takes its toll on everything. There's a murex shell. Can I get it before it rolls back into the water? That's a big lace murex shell. That's a nice find right there. And it was on its way back into the Gulf. It's a beautiful murex. Absolutely gorgeous. That is a nice find right there. I don't know if you saw when I grabbed it, it was on its way back into the water. Huh. I just caught it out of the corner of my eye. What I find it absolutely amazing, that was a little snowy egret that just flew by in front of me. What I find amazing is when you look at the, all these shells on the beach, keep in mind that there was something living inside of these shells at one point. All of these shells represent a living animal. Like this oyster shell. At one time there was an oyster in this shell. All our shellfish have taken a beating from the red tide. It is all the shrimp in the Gulf. Believe it or not, there's big lobsters out in the Gulf, huge lobsters. But our crabs, our stone crabs, our blue crabs, you know, we're being urged, please do not eat any shellfish that come out of the Gulf. I wouldn't eat anything right now out of the Gulf, but I feel so sorry for the people that make their living off of fishing and crabbing, the shrimpers, the fishermen, the crabbers. What is gonna happen to our stone crab season this year? I feel sorry for those guys. There's Everglades City down to the south of us. That community, that's how they make their living, is fishing and crabbing. What's gonna to happen to that community? A very, a lot of history behind Everglades City. You should read up on Everglades City. Back in the, oh, back in the 80s, a lot of, a lot of marijuana was coming through Everglades City. 
<laughs> There's some interesting stories about that little town, Chuckalusky. Florida has some really colorful history, to say the least. We've had a little bit of everything. Lots of history with the Indians. Explorers, the early Spanish explorers. Read up about the Calusa Indians. Very, very interesting tribe. Lots of remnants from the Calusas around in the Southwest Florida area. Occasionally people find along the beach here in the water, they'll find shark's teeth that are from prehistoric sharks from the Megalodon. And they actually find those in the rivers, inlands, prehistoric shark's teeth. Isn't that amazing to think what was out here? What was swimming in the waters at one time? They've found, you know, skeletons of woolly mammoths on the beaches here. Not recently, but they have found them here. The skeletons of those great big woolly mammoths. I had a friend of mine found the tooth of one at Barefoot Beach, a tooth from a woolly mammoth about, oh, 35 years ago. All kinds of crazy things swimming around here. Here's one of them. Here's one of those poor dead eels that washed up on the beach. For the most part, the rangers have picked them all up. Those of you just joining, we are still under the red tide warning here. Definitely still have red tide. So I would not suggest that anybody comes out here for a, a swim. The smell is not bad. However, if you have any kind of breathing problems, you probably don't want to come out here. Don't push your luck. If you do go in the water, I would say just don't go out any deeper than your knees. Definitely don't go out in the water if you have any open cuts. And when you come out of the water, make sure you shower off. Bring a bar of soap with you too. Preferably something that won't hurt the environment. Some kind of environmentally friendly, environmentally safe soap. There's plenty of showers here at the beach. I'd suggest you park close to one of the bathhouses. It's not going to kill you. It's going to kill you if you have an open cut. And it's there's other things besides the red tide out here. You just want to use common sense out here. If especially, you know, I don't wear shoes out here. I watch where I'm walking. If I was to cut my foot, there is no way I'd be going out in the water here. But if you want to wear a pair of beach shoes, that's a great idea. I just grew up, I'm pretty much a native of Florida. I grew up in, with bare feet and in a bathing suit. I got pretty tough feet. Just amazing how flat this water is. Surprise, not one dolphin yet this morning. They could very well be up in Wiggins Pass. A lot of times they spend their time in Wiggins Pass to the north of us, or down at Vanderbilt Beach, a little further to the south of us. I'm sure they're here somewhere around us, just not right out in front of us this morning. But you never know. You just never know when they're gonna show up. There's a cool little shell. 
That's called a kitten's paw. For obvious reasons, a kitten paw shell. It's got some nice color to that one. I'm gonna walk up here. I'm gonna follow the beach here, the shoreline. See if we find anything else interesting out here. Some interesting shells. There's some nice little piles of shells along the beach here. Again, we're just we're at low tide now. So this is the best time to do your shelling, if you're into shelling. And if you can brave the beach, if you're brave enough to come out. There's, I've seen a few people out here already this morning. Oh, darn it. There's another murex shell piece of a murex shell. This is a piece of an apple murex shell. Just a piece of one. Beautiful shells, the murex shells. That's just a piece. So if I can get it to focus here. Piece, a piece of an apple murex. actually have a murex I just picked up a little earlier so you can see what they look like this is a lace murex this is just a white murex that's what they look like that's a lace murex shell very very cool shells let's see what else we can find the shells are so spread out here it's really hard to see We've got the ridge line up here, the high tide ridge line. And then we've got what's getting exposed to low tide over here. <clears throat> There's a nice little fighting conch shell. Looks like a nice one. Yeah, that's like half grown right there. Little Florida fighting conch. What else is in this pile here? Any neat jewel box shells? I haven't seen a big jewel box shell in a long time. I see lots of little ones, little remnants of them. That's what's left of jewel box shells there. Some old jewel box shells. Good morning. How about, let's see, some slipper shells. Any slippers down here? They're usually all over. I wanna find a nice one. There's, looks like possibly a good one here. A slipper shell. You know, look at that. Why do they call that a slipper shell? Well, watch. Yeah, it looks like a little slipper when you turn it over. The slipper shell. There's another person walking the beach ahead of me now. So she's going to beat me to any of the big shells up there. I'll still walk along here and see what we find. Yeah, have to walk slow when you're shelling. That's the secret. Take your time. Let's 
is kind of sad here where I'm at right now. Just a week ago, before the red tide reared its ugly head again, this little spit of sand here, all out here, was just covered with birds, covered with birds. It was so neat. The red tide was leaving. Our beaches were clean, were starting to clear up. Then bam, last Thursday night, right around just before sunset Thursday, the red tide came back in. I have no idea what the conditions are to the south of me down as you get down towards the Naples Pier. I don't know if anybody's been down there lately in the past few days. I know there's another site here, another page on Facebook, Naples Photo Blog, you can go to. They kind of hang out down in that area on the beach. And supposedly they report on the red tide conditions also. But the red tide is just a crazy, crazy thing. I mean, it just comes in big patches along the shore. You might have an area that's really bad, then boom. You get into a nice area, then you go a little further south or north, boom, another area of red tide. You just can't predict where it is, when it's coming, how long it's gonna be here for. NOAA, N-O-A-A, -A, NOAA. You can Google NOAA red tide and you'll get a, they have a chart that they try to predict the red tide conditions for a week, but it's mother nature, you know, she does what she's gonna do. When it comes down to it, she'll do whatever the heck she wants to do. There's a piece of a little fighting conch over here, another little baby fighting conch shell. There's a nice scallop shell. I haven't, I've seen a few scallops. I haven't picked any up here. Where's a nice scallop? Not too many shells on the sandbar here this morning. This is all kind of new beach out here where I'm standing. We didn't have this a year ago here. Our friend Roy, who by the way is at home recovering, if you haven't heard, he's out of the rehab, out of the nursing facility. He's at home recovering now, happy as can be. Our friend Roy, well, that's this is where he and I, up under these trees, that's where him and I would have our little conversations in the morning. I'm so looking forward to those conversations out here on the beach with him again. see a little whelk shell rolling around in the surf or at least piece of a little whelk shell what's left of a little lightning whelk shell here
beautiful Tuesday morning here. There's a little baby fighting tonk. That's a nice little baby. A baby Florida fighting conch shell right there. That's a nice little one. That's a keeper. What do we got over here? Got a little bit of everything over here. A worm shell, the tip of a worm shell, an auger shell, a turkey wing. What else is over here? Did I say a turkey wing? Yep, that's a turkey wing shell. A turkey wing. There's an auger shell on the right and a worm, a, a worm tip, tip of a worm shell there on the left. You can find all kinds of neat little shells on the beach here. When you just stop and start looking around all kinds of neat stuff another little little fighting conch rolling around all kinds of fun stuff if you just stop and take the time to look The big shells, they just kind of jump out at you, but the little ones, you gotta really stop them. Move stuff around. Look at that. I love these shells, these are one of my favorites. Nice little moon shell. See, if I was just moving, walking fast along here, I wouldn't have found that. There's a nice little shark eye. A little shark eye shell. Just because I was taking my time, I spotted it. It was like that on the beach. They're a lot harder to spot when they're like that, upside down. There's a nice little moon shell. Also called a shark eye. So as you can see, it pays to take your time when you're out here shelling. Perseverance and patience pay off. <laughs> the three P's of shelling. There's an old crown conch down here. These are beautiful shells. This is just a portion of one here. Just a piece of an old little crown conch. They're absolutely beautiful shells. You can see the inside of it there. What's left of a crown conch. We found some pretty neat shells so far this morning. Let's see what else we come across out here. I was walking along the water line. I'm gonna check a little higher up on the ridge line here real quick see if there was anything that i might have missed you know yesterday i was you know i always let people know i don't do this you know i do this as a service i don't get paid to do this I, my goal is to try to educate people, share what 
little bit of knowledge I have about the things on the beach here. I try to share that with people. I'm always trying to learn more. I try to keep them informed about what's really going on here, at least in North Naples with the red tide. I don't sugarcoat it. I do love this place. I mean, it's a wonderful place to come and visit. I mean, but the purpose of my videos aren't to promote tourism. They're to educate, that's the main purpose. However, the majority of my videos are like tourism videos. I mean, when the beach is beautiful, it is beautiful here. There's some beautiful videos and we had some wonderful dolphin encounters here, me and my friend Roy. You need to take some time and go through my videos. It's not all dirty water and dead fish and crabs and eels. We have seen some incredible sights on this beach, Roy and I. I've been walking the beach now here for about three years. Seen some beautiful, beautiful rays, stingrays, eagle rays. We've seen dolphins. We've seen all kinds of fish, all kinds of birds. We've talked to quite a few people over the years out here, some very interesting people. Hopefully they'll all be back this winter. We have made some good friends out here on the beach, that's for sure, through these beach walks. And friends all over the world through these live feeds, it's amazing. There's actually been a lot of personal friendships have developed through this live feed. People here in the community get together, they, they meet here and they get together and become friends. Or they meet here and then when the folks come from up north, they get together and become friends. I mean, it's amazing. What do we have down here? Oh, darn it. I was excited for a minute. I thought I found a nice little banded tulip shell. Ah, uh, but no. It's got a chip in it. Darn it. It's got a little chip. But you can see, you can imagine just how beautiful these banded tulips are. Darn it. Thought I got one this morning. These banded tulips have been eluding me forever. <laughs> All I find are broken ones. The broken ones, they just pop up all over the place. <laughs> Look, <laughs> see, they just taunt me. Here's another one. There's another broken banded tulip shell. Almost like it's just laying there laughing at me, saying, na 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 na. <laughs> 90, 90, new, new, how does that go? But there's two broken banded tulips. I'll find a nice one one of these days. Someday I'm gonna find a big shark's tooth out here too. Those things, I never have any luck finding them. Other people find them by the hundreds. But I do find shark eyes. Looky there. Another shark eye or moon shell, whichever you choose to call it. Another one. There's number two right out here on this sandbar this morning. Awesome, awesome. I'm glad I came back and I walked the beach line. And then I came back up and watched, walked the ridge line here looking for shells. That paid off. Got another moon shell. And I, you know, I have walked by tons of other shells. I mean, you just can't see everything. It's impossible to spot everything. But there's so many cool little shells out here. If you just take your time. 
I remember when I first came out on this little point here, I said, up oh, there's a lady walking ahead of me. She's gonna find all the big stuff. Well, look what she missed. She missed two cool moon shells. <laughs> she's actually a friend of ours. She watches our feed here. She's out here to, for more of a good brisk walk than shelling, but you know, when you see something neat on the beach, it's hard not to pick it up. Yeah, it was earlier I was saying about all the friendships that have developed through these beach walks, through these live video feeds on Facebook. I always try to remind people to let everybody know where they're watching from. Introduce yourself when you come on board here. Be sure to like and follow Southwest Florida Television. I don't know, I don't have a schedule for these beach walks. I just do them whenever the mood strikes and the my schedule works out. But they're pretty casual. And I really don't. I, I actually encourage people to start their little conversations in the comments sections. That's what it's about. It's about bringing people together. This beach walk is just a platform to bring people together. Kind of a nice, peaceful way to start the day. And of course, you can always watch these at your leisure. I think they get reposted. At the conclusion, it'll be reposted on Facebook. And I also post it on YouTube. A lot of times, the video on Facebook isn't that good. The quality kind of goes up and down. So the one on YouTube is usually a little better. So I'll post a picture or something with a link to that. I'll also include it in the description of this post. And the other day when I was walking along, I had just mentioned that I was coming home from a little job up in North Fort Myers last Friday and I got rear-ended on I-75, and of course, the idiot took off. I had slammed my brakes on because the truck in front of me dropped a piece of furniture out of it. Of course, he was clueless and went on up the road, too. I wound up getting rear-ended and got the front of my car dinged up, so it wasn't a good day on Friday. But I had mentioned that, and I was talking about how I don't get paid to come out here and do these beach walks. And every occasionally people make a little contribution. And yesterday, a couple people were kind enough to make a little contribution. That was awesome. If anybody wants to make a little donation, you can find my PayPal information right here in the description of this post. Something about live feeds. A lot of people don't realize when you're watching a live feed, if the person that's generating the live feed took the time to add the location in their description, if you click on that little red live button up in the corner of the screen, just click on that, it will tell you where the live feed is coming from. Lots and lots of people are always in live feeds, are always saying, where are you at? Where are you at? Where's this? Well, it's up to the person generating the live feed to do it. But if they're smart, they will put the location in, and then you just click that little red button, and you'll know where they're at. But a lot of people don't realize that on both ends. Here's a piece of a big old lightning whelk shell. was a big lightning whelk at one time. Now it's just a, a little piece of one. Kind of cool though, seeing the inside of it. It's kind of like a skeleton of a lightning whelk. 
I'd love to find a lightning whelk that size. Wow. Here's a piece of finger coral. So sad. It's neat to find coral on the beach, but what that means is our coral reefs are slowly dying. That's a piece of finger coral. We do have a reef offshore here. I have not seen any photos from it in a long time, no video. Several years ago, we recorded a little video out there. One of those, we kind of followed one of those batfish along the bottom there that we've seen washed up dead on the beach now because of the red tide. Well, that was kind of neat. I'm gonna see if I can find that video. In the video was my old business partner, JP, who passed away not too long ago. I've lost a couple close friends in the past six months. So it seems to happen, the older you get, the more friends you start losing. Just kind of meandering here, taking my time, looking for some shells. I'm not gonna go any further north than this. You can see we've lost a lot of beach up here to the north. This beach used to extend way out here, way out. The Hurricane Irma last year, last September, she kind of put the icing on the cake for us here. She just wiped this whole north end of the park away. Maybe it'll come back, it might rebuild itself. As of now though, it looks like it's still slowly eroding. You know, when I'm looking for shells, it's like I always feel, oh, I gotta go that extra 10 steps. I'm, I'm missing something if I don't go 10 more steps. A lot of times that has happened. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna turn around and I go five more steps and I find something. Crazy. These are fun little shells. I always like showing these to people because I know we have a lot of cat lovers out there, the little kitten's paws. The little kitten paw shells. Very popular with the cat lovers. Well, I'm going to head back down to where we started. We started down in Area 1 this morning, way down at the south end of the beach. I wasn't planning on spending so long out here. But things happen. Sometimes I just get wrapped up in the moment out here. Another nice little kitten paw shell down here. All kinds of neat little thing. Here's a little cockle shell. Jewel box shells. That jewel box is pink on the inside. That's kind of neat. I mean, there's so many cool little shells. 
That's what people just bypass. They just walk right by them. You just never know what you're going to find when you start digging around in these piles like this. Unfortunately, my time is running out here this morning. But I'll keep an eye open as I walk back down the beach here. Here's a big olive shell, an old olive shell. I'm in the shade here, I want to get out in the sun and I'll show it to you. There's a piece of a big olive shell, what's left of an olive. Those are kind of neat, the olive shells. This one's got a hole in the end. That's a good size olive shell there. Gotta get some light on it. No light here. <laughs> That's a big old olive shell right there. Again, I'm up where our friend Roy would meet me up in area four. Piece of a worm rock, piece of worm rock, a nice little chunk of worm rock. Oh, some of the dead eels on the beach that they didn't get picked up. There's three of them right there, three dead eels. Just incredible. Check out Saturday's beach walk. Ugh, amazing. The amount of eels that were offshore here, swimming in the water. That's probably gonna scare a lot of people, <laughs> seeing all those eels. But you know what? They've always been here. If you saw everything that was out in the water, you definitely wouldn't wanna go in. You know, it's funny, it's the eels, you know, the sharks, I mean, they really don't want anything to do with this. They want to stay away from us like we want to stay away from them. What you really got to be careful for are the things you can't see out there, the bacteria. That's what'll get you. That's why you got to use some precautions out there when you're swimming. Always shower off good when you get out of the water. Now there's another a dead stone crab on the beach. We've seen Several dead stone crabs. That's a shame to see them. We know that's definitely hurting the stone crab industry here. Those are a delicacy here, the stone crab claws. So sad to see them dead. I feel sorry for the stone crabbers. I don't know what kind of season they're going to have. Cool. Here's a little lightning whelk shell. See, I missed that on my way up. A little baby, that's a little baby lightning whelk. How cool is that? Very cool.
Hey, earlier this morning we saw a couple ospreys. That was neat. But no signs of any dolphins this morning. Boo-hoo. We missed our dolphins. They're out there somewhere. That's for sure. Yeah, you look out there, it just... It's so beautiful. The beautiful blues out there. It's so inviting. But yet, it's not inviting. <laughs> it's filthy. Terrible. I mean, a couple weeks ago we were out here, the water was clearing up. We we're, were seeing all kinds of fish, all kinds of birds, people returning to the beach, people actually venturing out into the water. The water was getting gorgeous. Ooh, that one was really, really clearing up. And at the flick of a switch, last Thursday, the wind shifted directions and bam, the red tide was back. Here's a dead puffer fish washed up on the beach. That's a little bait, a little puffer. Very common, very common fish here, the puffer fish. There's a dead one, killed by the red tide. Two, maybe three weeks ago, I just was mesmerized right here in front of me. There was just hundreds of birds, hundreds in the morning. Now they're all gone. Couple little shorebirds there hopping around. I mean, when you look at that, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful sight. But there's red tide out there. And the waves, the beautiful blue sky. And it's so beautiful. And yet we can't enjoy it. So very sad. Pile. Look at this big pile of shells here. Big little, a big little pile. How's that? <laughs> a big little pile. It's not huge, but it's a nice little pile of shells. Something that'd be worth digging into if you came out here. See them all along here. I'm sure there's still something nice buried in there.
I am just very disappointed that we didn't get to see a dolphin this morning. The past three days, they were pretty darn active. Now there's something that's not fun to see, a dead horseshoe crab up on the beach. Another one in the bottom feeders. These are, these are what's dying. Everything on the bottom is dying now. There's a, that's a dead horseshoe crab. It seems you know, all the fish that have died, everything that's died out here in the Gulf because of the red tide is slowly settling to the bottom and decaying. And now all of the bottom feeders, all the things that are the cleaners of the ocean, cleaners of the ocean floor, the catfish, the shrimp, the crabs, the horseshoe crabs, now they're all starting to die because they're eating that poisoned fish. So we are seeing quite a few dead crabs along the beach here. Dead and dying. And out in the water, there goes a whole, a whole flock of terns just flew by. And they landed on that sandbar. Wow. Nope, nope, they're flying up the beach. They didn't land. I thought maybe they're going to land. There's another huge flock of them flying by. They're too small to see in the video. But probably a hundred birds just flew by. Well, it's kind of a good sign. They're still going. They're still going. Wow, they're still coming. Wish they'd come in a little closer. There's a dead crab down here. I was just saying earlier how the crabs are showing up on the beach. You can see a little baby one next to it. Oh boy, look at these shells here piled up. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff you want to take your time and kind of sift through. You're probably not going to find any big ones, but you might find some little gems. Maybe even some shark's teeth buried in here. Who knows what all's buried in there? I'm just kind of walking along here, looking down one last time here, seeing what I can spot. A 
you know, <clears throat> I try to focus on the positive things here, not the gloom and doom. I try to be optimistic and hope and pray that someday our beaches here will return to normal, our water will return to normal. You know, people are so quick to point fingers you know, at, P at other people and blame other people for what's going on here. Especially, everybody wants to blame the government. But, in my opinion, when it all comes down to it, it's not the government's fault, it's our own fault. We're the ones that have polluted this environment. We didn't take good care of it. You can blame the government and say it's the government's job to clean it up, but do you really think anything's ever gonna get done if we wait for the government to take care of things? I think we kind of have to take matters into our own hands. I mean, it's become good stewards of the environment. Take care of it. If everybody just changed one little thing, maybe one little household product that they're using and went to something that's more eco-friendly, it would make a huge difference. It'd be a start. I mean, this problem we have now is not gonna go away overnight. This nonsense with the Lake O releases, that toxic water being released from Lake Okeechobee, that's not gonna change overnight. I mean, farmers, there's a lot of wonderful farmers out there and they're, they're using environmentally friendly products now, herbicides and things. They're, they're organic chemical you know, products. I'm not a farmer, I don't know what they're called, but I know they're trying. And that's what it's about. It's about taking that first step. But I personally am not holding my breath waiting for the government to fix things. I mean, this is the reason I come out here is to show people what it's like. There's a lot of people that if they don't see the problem, they don't know a problem exists. And then it gets blown out of proportion. There's so much misinformation on the internet and on the news, it's ridiculous. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, if they watch the news, they would think there's dead bodies washing up on the beach, the way some of them report this stuff. I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, the first, the most important thing is you need to educate yourself about the problems. There's a lot of good information out there on the internet too. You can't just, don't get stuck in a rut getting your information from one source, especially news. News is so tailored to its viewers now. You just pick the channel where you want to hear the news twisted your way. There's a little snowy egret up here looking for some fish. Good morning. Hopefully he finds something to eat that's not dirty and toxic. It's a little snowy egret. He wants to stay in this spot. He's going up on the beach. He's telling me to go around him. He's saying, go past me. Boy, the water is actually starting to cool down. That is great too. When the water cools down, it's 
not good for the red tide. out walking the beach just looking at the different marine life that's washed up dead here those folks were just taking a picture of unfortunately sadly a dead stone crab so sad so so sad This red tide is taking its toll on everything. I'm gonna take a picture of this real quick. Bear with me. Sadly, that's a dead stone crab. We have seen all kinds of dead crabs on the beach here, all kinds. Just so happens that the stone crabs are actually a delicacy. They're like a treasure. What the stone crabbers do is they harvest one claw off of a stone crab. They are only allowed to take one claw and those claws are a delicacy. But what is this red tide going to do to our stone crab season? Because shellfish are off limits. Anything out in the Gulf, do not eat any shellfish from the Gulf. I wouldn't eat anything. I wouldn't eat any fish either. Just a horrible situation. A horrible thing that's going on here. Hopefully will turn around somehow some way people are getting so smart our younger generation it's amazing how smart some of these kids are coming out of school maybe they'll find some way of eliminating or at least controlling the red tide And then, you know, if they do that, you stop and think, and it's like, well, here we are. We're messing with Mother Nature again. If we do find a way to eliminate red tide, what, what other problems might we be creating by that? Is in some weird way red tide Mother Nature's way of some type of population control for the fish and other marine life just throwing that out there there's only one person that has the answer to all these questions and it's not a scientist we all know who that is I mean in nature it seems everything happens for a reason we might not understand it and we might not like it But it seems everything happens for a reason. Now, red, the red tide. Have we made it worse over the years with all the chemicals we're dumping into the oceans and the Gulf? That's a good possibility. Maybe it's not the original red tide. It's something to think about. I don't have the answer. I wish I did. Gorgeous here as I look up the beach, though. The colors are just so beautiful. Just wish I was out here under better conditions. Well, I'm going to sign off here in a few minutes. I'm going to give you another look around.
Unfortunately, we didn't have any dolphin sightings this morning. We went from a record number on Sunday to zero today. Interesting. They're out there somewhere. They're probably a little further down the beach playing. Maybe they all had a meeting to go to this morning. Maybe a little social get together. <laughs> Well, hey, if you enjoy these beach walks, be sure to tell your friends. As always, I always say this, I'm sorry if it gets redundant. Nobody pays me to be out here. If anybody wants to make a little contribution, it always comes in handy. You can find my PayPal account info in the description of this post a little later. Also, I will repost this video on YouTube. It's usually a little better quality on YouTube. I'll share the link a little later here on Facebook so you can watch it. Share it with your friends. Share those YouTube links too. Some great videos on YouTube. Awesome dolphin encounters. Roy and I have had two pretty incredible dolphin encounters out here over the years. Need to watch those. Check out the photos here on my Facebook page right here at Southwest Florida Television. Be sure to like and follow Southwest Florida Television and subscribe to get the notifications when I go live because I have no clue when I'm going live. I really don't have a set schedule for these walks. People are always asking me that. And I don't really have a schedule. So at least you get notified. You won't be just stumbling across my live feeds. But anyway, have an awesome Tuesday wherever you might be watching from. I know we got friends watching from all around the world. Say some prayers for our beaches here. Say some prayers for our friends. Let's not forget all the people up that were caught up in the path of that tropical storm Florence. They're still recovering. Let's not forget them. Let's not forget our friend Roy. He's still on the road to recovery. Keep those cards coming for Roy. He really gets a kick out of that. That really lifts his spirits getting all those cards. Well, have a wonderful day. For Southwest Florida Television, I'm Rob Stan. God bless.